Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 612. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about a cannabis update and answer a listener question. So I wanted to give you a little bit of an update about cannabis because yesterday happened to be my birthday and I got a great birthday present. It was that our favorite cannabis ETF, MJ, was up 4.3% that day. Well, that may not sound like a big deal, but cannabis has been having a difficult time. I think mainly because they're based in Canada. Most of the cannabis companies that are public are from Canada. And since the mining stocks have been on such a tear and are up 40, 50% or more this year, a lot of money rotated out of cannabis and into the mining stocks, leaving cannabis to be down 30% from its highs. Now, if you've been listening to this podcast, you know that I cautioned you from buying at those highs And I talked with you about waiting until cannabis had dipped to a lower price so that you could buy it on sale. Well, we finally have reached that point where cannabis is on sale. And there's some very exciting things happening and some new news that I wanted to share with you. Here's a little clip from an article on Yahoo Finance written by Xavier Haas Benzinga. And he said, this week, the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, DEA, said it will expand the number of federal licenses for the research of cannabis. The Food and Drug Administration reopened its solicitation of public input on a potential reclassification of cannabis under international treaties, and the Department of Agriculture said legal hemp farmers will be eligible for federal crop insurance starting with the 2020 planting season. Well, I think that is huge news. One of the things we have been frustrated by is the lack of cannabis companies to be able to do proper research in order to get their specialty drugs and non-addictive healthy drugs passed by the DEA. So the fact that the DEA is expanding the number of federal licenses for the research of cannabis is huge news and great news for people who are in pain and who have all kinds of afflictions that cannabis is really helping. Recently, I read an article about NFL players that are in so much pain. Some of them are taking 100 pills of Percocet a month. That's right, 100 pills of Percocet a month. And they were saying that cannabis, CBD in particular, has been so much more helpful to their pain relief. This is not the version with THC. This is the non-THC cannabis version, medicinal cannabis, that is helping with severe pain relief. It's extremely effective, and the NFL players are hoping that the drug can be decriminalized so that they can use it for their pain relief. It was also very interesting to hear that on the TV show Project Runway, one of the fashion designers, Korto Momulu, featured a hemp-themed fashion collection during New York Fashion Week. Hemp was used for clothing a long time ago, back in the 1800s, I understand, and it's exciting to see that it can be used for clothing again. Some of these fashion designs were very interesting to look at, you know, kind of like a version of linen, with a nice texture and a natural quality to it that I think will be very interesting to see what people do with this new fabric. But mostly I'm happy for our farmers because since hemp was legalized last October, hemp crops have lacked the ability to have federal crop insurance 
And now the Department of Agriculture said, starting with the 2020 planting season, they will be eligible for federal crop insurance. So I think we're seeing a lot of movement forward, and I'm very excited to see some good things happening for this natural medicinal product that is going to be very helpful for people for epilepsy, for sleep, for pain relief, for all kinds of uses. And we don't even know some of those uses yet because, well, the right cannabinoids haven't been combined in the right way and studied to know exactly what's effective yet, because that's been very, very difficult. Now we're making some headway, and I hope that we're going to see some new combinations of cannabinoids happen so they can be introduced as natural, non-addictive, non-lethal drugs and replace some very dangerous opioids that really need replacing. So that was great news on the cannabis front. I think that rather than being driven by news, it looked to me like this was more of a cycle where cannabis came down to test the lows that it had had last year and those lows held. And so far, the chart looks very positive that we may have very well put in a bottom here and may be seeing the cycle head back up. I'm very, very optimistic on our MJ investment. I think we had a rare opportunity to buy low and buy it on sale. And that is exciting to me because, again, it's very early in this trend and we have a long way of growth to go. So if you can pick it up cheaper, pick it up and reduce your average cost, nibble here and there and add some more to your portfolio, as long as you're not overdoing, I think that is something that might work for you if it fits in with your asset allocation. Again, do your own research. Don't buy on my recommendation. Just use it as the starting point for you to investigate some more. All right. Now we had a listener of the podcast ask me this question. She said, I'm a faithful listener of Be Wealthy and Smart, and I have a quick question. How, where do I buy the MJ ETF? I haven't invested on my own outside of my job-sponsored retirement fund, and it seems like cannabis is an industry I shouldn't miss out on. Thanks in advance, DW. All right, DW, well, thank you for the question. Some people have only been investors in their 401k, for example, and it sounds like that might be where you're coming from. So if you only have a 401k, of course your 401k has a very limited menu and you're not going to be able to invest in MJ in most 401ks. There are rare exceptions to 401ks that might have the ability to invest in individual securities or ETFs, but those are few and far between, very, very rare. It's more likely that you're going to have to open an account at a brokerage firm and purchase MJ through the brokerage firm. The brokerage firm I use is Fidelity. I like Fidelity because of its large size, its very lengthy menu of being able to choose whatever investments you like, and you can work with them either online or on the phone. What I recommend you do is get on the phone with Fidelity, talk with a financial advisor for free, and have them help you set up the account. They can explore what kind of account is right for you, whether you want to have an IRA, whether you want to have an individual account. They'll go through everything with you and they'll make sure that everything is set up correctly. Then they can walk you through making the actual purchase of MJ in your account. Of course, you'll have to transfer the money in first. So there's going to be a delay between setting up your account and actually making your first trade. But once your account is opened and your money's in the account, you'll be able to go in and buy MJ. And I'm excited for you, DW, because once you start investing outside of your 401k, you really become an investor. I mean, you're an investor when you invest in your 401k too, but it's kind of like someone told me once. They said, you really become an art collector when you run out of wall space. (laughs) And I think that's kind of true. You really are an art collector when you're not just trying to fill your walls, but when you're really collecting art and you really love it and you buy it for that reason. It's kind of the same way with investing. Yes, it's absolutely great to be an investor in your 401k and your company retirement plans, but you really become an investor when you get excited about investing on your own and look into setting up an individual account. 
So I'm really proud of you, DW. Congratulations. And thanks for asking your question and for listening to the podcast. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be updated as soon as new podcasts are available. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.